yes. that we yes. trust in. Hallelujah. That's able to deliver with yes. great or small. It doesn't matter. Right. You're the yes, God that's able Lord. to do exceeding yes, abundantly Lord. above all that we can ask or think according to that power that works on the inside of us. I pray today that you would touch and anoint these words today in the hearts and ears and minds of your people, Lord God. In yes, Jesus' name Jesus we pray. Name we amen, pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Amen. I want to preach to you from this thought. Enough. All amen. you have is, is all you need. Praise God. All you have is all you need. In this story of Gideon, a man that God used to do a mighty act, and he was one of the judges that saved Israel. But in the book of Judges, you'll find this pattern that's happens over and over and we can look at our lives and see a similar pattern sometimes but you get to understand how God works and how he thinks and how he deals with his people praise God so what happens is the children of Israel God of course delivered them from Egypt into uh, the land of promise but he said you have to serve me the people that were here before you did not they served all these gods they made up but if I put you here, you have to serve me, and you do not fear their gods. In other words, serve their gods. So that was the deal. But you'll find that they sinned, and when they sinned, they served. And then when they served, they cried out, and God sent them a Savior. You see that pattern recurring over and over and over again in the lives of the people of Israel prior to them having a king. So... Israel sinned and God punished them with servitude in this particular time. The Midianites came and the Amalekites came and the nations of the east. So they had three, three oppressors that came to oppress them. And they did a pretty good job of oppressing them. The Bible says that Israel was in poverty. They were impoverished because of this. Now I'll tell you what they did. They did something. They didn't just simply... Uh, come to fight with them, but they did something that had long-term scarring effects. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they allowed the Israelites to plant their food. And then every year at harvest, they came like a, a horde. And they came and they stole all of the harvest. So Israel had nothing. Mm -hmm. This happened year and year again yeah. for about seven years. People cried out to God. Mm -hmm. But you remember, God had made a deal with them. If I'm going to bring you into this land, if it's going to be me that takes you out of Egypt and brings you across the desert into this place, you have to serve me. That's right. Yes. It's a fair deal. Yes. Yeah. But what happened, the Bible says, is they didn't. And so every year these enemies came up. You know, there was three enemies. And I like to type that to our lives. You know, the Midianites, it could be health. It could be marriage. It could be a job. But three enemies came up every year at harvest and attacked them. It was so bad that Israel was reduced to hiding in three places. A mountain, a cave, mm -hmm. or in strongholds. Right. That represents depression, mm -hmm. fear, yep. anger. See, there are things that bring us to these emotions that many times end up ruling our lives. Right. There are a lot of people that are dealing with immense anger. But there are things that have driven them there. They didn't just yeah. jump there one day and say, I want to be angry. I want to be mad. <laughs> right. There are things that drive you yes. there. There are yes. things in life. There are situations that you deal with. And I type them to the Amalekites, to the Midianites, to the nations of the East. These people that were oppressing the people of God. Right. And we have that happen in our lives. Things come against you. You deal with things in life. And if you're not careful, right. You allow them to rule your life. Right. So here you have depression, fear, anger. Mm -hmm. Ruling their lives. The Bible says that they, they end up dwelling in dens and mountains, caves and strongholds. These three united oppressors came to spoil the harvest strategically. And they severely damaged Israel's survival. It was bad. Satan wants to inflict lasting damage on you. He wants to inflict lasting damage. He wants to do things in such a way that they scar your life and make you think that I can't change. It can't get any better. It's going to stay this way. It's going to remain like this. He'll make you think that. That's right. It's one thing to defeat your enemy in battle, but it's another thing altogether to inflict him with such a pain that nothing seems to help. 
They were practicing cruelty and harsh measures designed to invoke long-term fear and hopelessness in the minds of the Israelites. But Israel cried out to God. And so God answered them. He responded to them by sending a prophet. And the prophet came to them and said this to them. He said, I brought you out of Egypt from slavery. Two, I delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians. Three, from all that oppressed you, I drove them out and gave you their land. Right. Number four, I said to you, fear not or serve not their gods. Yeah. And number five, you have not obeyed. So God basically said, okay, you're crying out. I hear you. I, I hear you. Right, I hear you. Right. But there's a reason why all this is happening. So God gives them the reason. You didn't obey me. Okay. Yeah. So next, God sends an angel to Gideon. Now Gideon, they had made provision. Okay? They had made provision. You know that they were getting all of their harvest stolen. Yeah. So what they did is they hid in like caves. And so they gathered some harvest so they'd have something to eat. And here's Gideon in the threshing floors, getting the wheat, you know, getting the wheat off the off the branches so they can have something to eat. And while he's doing this and thinking about why I have to do this and why we have to do this and why we have to be careful because here comes the Midianites, they're coming. He's thinking about all this stuff. An angel shows up. And the angel looks at him and says, the Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor. That means of war. God is with you. And you know, you see in the Bible when, when an angel appears to people, what do they do? They get all freaked out and they fall out and they, you know, all kind of <laughs> yeah. things happen. Because they're afraid. Right. You know, it's not a normal occurrence. But watch what Gideon does. He immediately launches back at the angel with this. He says, if God be with us, why is this happening? Where are all the miracles of God bringing us out of Egypt? God has, um, he has forsaken us and he's delivered us to the hand of the Midianites. So he hits him back with fire. This guy Gideon, I know you've heard a lot of things about Gideon, but he wasn't a wimp. He was not a wimp. He, was a, he just needed some direction. He was frustrated. He's out here doing this and, you know, hiding from the Midianites and just tired of this situation happening year, over, year after year for seven years. Wow. And so the angel then says to him again, ignoring what he's hearing from Gideon, and just says, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. In other words, see this anger, this 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 uh, this 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 anger that you have. Take that and refocus it. God's going to deliver them into your hands. Yeah. And Gideon begins to spout his disqualifications, like we always do. Right. Gideon began to say, "With what? I'm poor." And I'm the least in my father's house. So, I mean, you know, how am I going to do this, God? But he was playing right into God's hands. Because when God goes to, to do something, when yeah. God goes to use somebody, he doesn't get the most talented person. He's not looking for that person that everybody looks at and says, Ah, oh, no. he's talented. No. He's strong. He's smart. No. God doesn't look for that one. That's right. What, what it tells me in, in 1 Corinthians um, 1 in 25 through 28 it says this because the foolishness of God is wiser than men right. and the weakness of God is stronger than men for you see in your calling brother how that not many wise after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called but God verse number 27 hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise and God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things that are mighty. God looks for base things. Verse 28 says, And the base things of this world and the things that are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to nothing things that are. In other words, God's saying that when I go looking for somebody to use, I'm not looking for somebody that everybody thinks is great. Right. Because then that person gets the glory. Yeah. God says, I will share my glory with none other. That's right. Because he doesn't have to. That's right. It's not right for him to. Mm -hmm. Because he is the he's the initiator of whatever glory there is. That's right. He made everything that's here. That's right. So all the glory belongs to him. Hallelujah. But he chooses people that are base. Yes. That are humble. Yes. The qualifications, you're qualified to be used of God. Yes. 
Praise God. God doesn't need somebody who's, you know, has everything going for them. That's right. Does it for somebody that's available. Right. Hallelujah. You can't see what God's doing as long as you focus on the negative. Right. right. If you focus on what's negative, what's wrong, you won't see what God's doing. Mm -hmm. God requires for you to have a little bit of optimism. Right. It's necessary. Because, listen, the easiest job in the world is to be a complainer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> because everybody can find something to complain oh, about yeah. everything. Right. <laughs> it's a very, very easy job. But it's unfruitful. It's unproductive. It and it doesn't push you along where you're trying to go. That's right. There, there's a battle to be fought and won, but you have to see yourself the way he does. That's right. Amen. He sees you as victorious. Yes. yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God will help you get there. Right. He will help you he get will. to that place like he, he did Gideon. You'll see in this story when he did yes. Gideon to, to get him to the place that he could believe that he was a victor. Right. Praise right. God. Thank you, the only thing that has to change is what we believe. No other facts on the ground or in reality are more important than what you believe. See, because what you believe determines what you will do. That's right. If you believe it's hopeless, it's it, nothing you do is going to change, you'll do nothing. Right, right. But if you believe that if I'm willing to yes. make the effort, yes. things are going to change, That's right. then all of a sudden, things have a possibility of changing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. What you believe gives God permission to interfere or intervene in your life. Right. He holds himself back by what you believe. He's limited only by what he has all power in his hands, but he will not overstep that boundary. Right. right. Because it's all about what you believe. It's all about getting you to the place that you see him as greater than what you see. Right. Praise God. Right. Thank you, Jesus. His power has to be greater. Right. Belief is a powerful thing that builds trust enough to launch faith. Yeah. Belief is a powerful thing because it builds faith or builds trust. Trust in God enough right. for you to step out on faith. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Trusting God. is so important. Hallelujah. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's right. And lean not to your own understanding. Right. How many times do we do wait, this is the way we, we live. We right. think this way. Right. We lean on our own understanding. Right. We do what we think is right. We we That's we right. calculate it, we figure it out and we do what we think is right. The Bible says it like this. The ways, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. In other words, everything that you think to do, you can justify. Right. Right. Yeah. But the Bible says that God tries the reins of the heart. Yes, he does. Yes. He knows how to deal with people. Yes, he, right. he knows yes. what he's doing. Right. He knows how to try your heart to test what's truly inside of you. Yes, he does. God knew that Gideon was a warrior. Gideon had gone from honest complaining to needing a sign. Right. You know, he asked, he asked the angel, he says, show me a sign that I've talked with an angel. Because after all that stuff that Gideon was doing and saying back to the angel, the angel came back finally and said, surely I will be with you. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. He's giving a little hint as to what was going to happen. Right. Gideon had gone from honest complaining to just needing a sign. God knew he was a warrior yeah. needing marching orders. Yeah. See, God saw something in Gideon that nobody else did. Yeah. God spoke to him. And so Gideon then prepares, what he does is he prepares a, uh, a goat and he tells the angel to wait there and he gives a gift. He brings a gift back. He sets it on the rock. And he says, show me a sign. The angel takes the staff and he touches the goat meat with the staff and fire comes out of the rock and consumes it. So it becomes like a sacrifice unto God. Everything is for a purpose. Yes. Because every time they sin, they have to give a sin offering. And so here he is, he's given a gift and it turns into a sacrifice that God consumes. Mm -hmm. Next, he's given an assignment. God says to Gideon through this angel, right. he says, what I want you to do is I want you to go to your father. And this shows you how far off they are. Go to your father's house where the, the Baal idol is set up. See? They're wondering why God's not working in their life. And they have a, an obvious sin against God. Baal. 
is set up in the place of God. Mm -hmm. And they're worshiping Baal. Mm -hmm. And God says to Gideon, what I want you to do is take that foolish statue down right. and put, you know, make a sacrifice unto God there. Right. And so Gideon goes, he gets 10 other guys, and they do it. And the Bible says in the morning, all the men of that place came to Gideon's father's house. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, bring your son out here so we can kill him. And his dad says, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now his dad wasn't bold enough to take the statue down himself. Yeah. Take the idol down. Right. God spoke to Gideon. He knew it was inside of the young man. He, he would obey. Yes. And so his father comes out and says, listen, why are you guys defending Baal? Mm -hmm. Think about it. We, we're children of God. We're children. God's our God. What are we doing defending Baal? Right. Why can't Baal defend himself? What are y'all going to do? Kill somebody because he took down a Baal statue? And the Bible says that this kind of reverberated through their thinking. They were just like, wait a minute. They kind of woke yeah, up. Right. What are we doing? Yes, yes. And he was able to raise an army. Right, yeah. So Gideon was able to raise an army because people saw a leadership. And God needed him to do something. God asked you to do something sometimes that seems so bold. Right. right. But when you do it. Yes. Praise God. That step of faith right. is what God needs yes, right. you to take. Hallelujah. Praise God. When Gideon took that step of faith, God knew he had a leader. Yes. And the people did too because they rallied around this guy. Right. They were all suffering. All these tribes from what the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the nations of the east were doing right. to them every year. Yes. But nobody lifted a finger against them mm -hmm. until Gideon right. was dealt with by God. Did made that move against the statue, that idol, that was keeping God from blessing him in the first place. Ah. So God said, correct it, correct it, get it right. The Bible says, you know, if my people which are called yes. by my name yes. will humble themselves, yeah. seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, praise God, then I'll hear from heaven and yes. heal their land. But God always requires something of us. Yes. If there's yes. been a blockage, yes. if there's something that's yes. blocking the blessing of God in your life, if there's something that God has asked you to do that you're not doing, okay. you've got to correct that. Yeah, thing. Do. We can't do. think that God's just going to whitewash and say, well, okay, no. I, I don't care about that. I'm just gonna... no. no, God has rules. That's God right. has order. God says let everything yes. be done in decency yes. and in order. Right. And in your life, there has to be decency yes. and order. Right. If there are things that are out of order, then you're going to expect the chaos that you've done. Right. That's right. Because the Bible says that if you sow to the flesh, of the flesh you will reap. Mm. Mm. You know, destruction. Right. But if you sow to the Spirit, then life. Oh, and God wants you to have life. Yeah. The Bible says that He's come to give us yes. life yes. and life yes. more abundantly. Yes. Hallelujah. But we have to get those areas of our life that the devil likes to just try to sow in yes, here. Yes, he does. Get us to do this little right. thing. Well, this is okay. It's not so it's right. not so bad. This isn't so well, you know, this is okay. I know the church says that, but I I, I know the Bible says that, but you know, yeah. it's it's, it's, all, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> no. And then when the chaos comes that God said would come, you're, you're, you're kind of stepping right. outside the umbrella of protection. Wow. And when the chaos right. comes, you need to expect it. Right. That's right. That's God's right. not saying you have to stay in that situation. Right. He's saying correct it. Correct it. Yeah. You, correct it. you can expect God to move in your life in extraordinary ways Ooh, yeah. like he did in Gideon's. So the Bible says that after that, Gideon amassed an army. He got a little army together of about 22,000 people. Nice size army. Yeah. But we later find out that the enemy had about 120,000. Mm -hmm. There's three armies, the Midianites, Amalekites, oh, and the nations of wow. the East. I don't know how many nations right. it was, but they were all there in the valley. That's why the Bible says they were like grasshoppers in the scripture we read. You know, they're just all these people, they had so many camels, you can't even count the camels. And so he gets 22,000 people. They're already outnumbered by five times. And God says to Gideon, well, let me just back up just a little bit. Gideon, after he gets his army together, he says to God, God, can you just do me a favor? Just show me that you're really with me. Right. Because once again, you know, he looked, he looked at the size of his army, 22,000. He knew there was a lot more on the other side. Yes, 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 he did. And so he said, God, okay, I'm going to have a, a rug or a fleece here on the floor inside the threshing room. I want that to be wet in the morning and the floor around it dry. So he came back the next morning, sure enough, it was wet and the floor around it was dry. 
He said, God, don't be angry at me, but I just ask you for one more, one more sign. Let the fleece be dry this morning, the next morning, and let the floor around it be wet. He came back. Sure enough, that's what it was. <laughs> and so God allowed it. Now, yeah. you were a fleecy God, I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. There's some circumstances here that you probably have not seen before. You probably haven't heard this before, but I'm going to bring this out in a second. But this is akin to Joseph having the dream. See, God will give you something that helps you to believe yes. when he knows you're going to face something that causes you to not believe. Right. Sure. Right. So Joseph. Joseph has these two dreams, ironically, too. And he goes through situations, the pit. He goes to feed his brothers. They get him thrown into a pit. He gets sold down to Potiphar's house as a slave. Mm -hmm. And you know the story Potiphar's wife gets to looking at him, yeah. and she tries to mess with him. and. <laughs> And he runs away from her. Right. He gets brain and gets thrown into prison. Right. right. He had dreams, though. Mm. The dreams that God gave him showed him he's going to be before a king. Ooh, People yeah. were going to be but underneath him. He was going to be in a position of authority. Yeah. He didn't know probably what that meant. Right, fully. right. But he went to these two trials. Because of those dreams he had, those two dreams he had, he was able to keep him through these two trials. Yeah. Deep trials. You go right. from being a slave and then a prisoner. I mean, what worse can you get? How worse can you get? Right. I mean, those are, those are two bad things. It's like from bad to worse. Right. But he's caught up from that place into the palace. And he sees the fulfillment of the dream. Now, here Gideon is. Gideon asks for those two signs. And God grants those two signs. But then Gideon's feeling good. Well, you know, wow, God did that. And that's great. And Okay, I got my army. And God says, Gideon, uh, got a problem here. You have too many people. Now, if you do the math, it doesn't quite make sense. Because I just told you that they had five times the people right. that Gideon had, or six times the people that Gideon had. And so here's Gideon getting told by God that you have too many people. And God says, here's the reason. If I give you the victory... With this amount of people, they're going to think that they did it, and they're not going to get the message. Right. Because there was a message that God was trying to get to his people. He didn't want there to be a repeat of this same situation. Yes. He wanted them to get the message that you don't disobey the order that I put in place. If I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt, you don't betray me when, when you get there into the land of promise and start doing your own thing. Yeah. Or start doing the same thing that people that were before you did. Because right. I'm going to treat you just like I treated them. I'm going to kick you out of the land too. What makes you think you're just going to stay there and not serve God? Right. So those people, his, his army was there. And God says, I want you to tell everybody who's afraid to go home. <laughs> now, if they knew what was on the other side, of course they were afraid. Yeah. <laughs> 10,000 people just said, you know, adios. And they left. Man. So he's left with... I guess about 12,000 12, wow. or something like that. Wow. And God says, you know what, Gideon? Remember, God gave Gideon two little tests, you know, the fleece being wet, floor dry, the two. And so God says, comes back to him. He could have done it in one shot. But he comes back to him and says, Gideon, you still got too many people. <laughs> okay. And so God says, I want you to take them down to the river, and we're going to do a test. We're not going to tell them what's going on. Okay. But it tells him to drink water. He said, everybody that gets down on all fours and puts their head down and starts drinking the water, send them home. The ones that get down on one knee and lap it up like a dog, those you keep. <laughs> well, of that 12,000 or however many was left after the yeah. previous guys left and went home, only 300 people did it right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So... You know, Gideon's left 300 people. But God told him. You see, he got a hold of just, you look at the face and you say, that's not a big deal. You know, the floor being wet to you. Right. But God knows what you need right. to believe. That's right. And that's what, exactly what God gave Gideon, what Gideon needed to believe. He went through all this stuff. We don't hear doubt in Gideon's no. voice. But God understood that he's human. Yes. You hear me? God understands that you're human. Yes. So when you're facing overwhelming odds, God will do this kind of thing for you. And this is our text we read today. God says to Gideon, he says, what I want you to do is I want you to go down to the enemy's camp. And I want you to hear, in the, in the same night now, the same night that God had reduced his army down to 300, 
the same night. It was important that it was right close to the same time. God says, I want you to go down to the army, and I want you to listen to what they're saying about you. He goes down, and at that moment that he got down close enough, the Bible says, the enemy, he could hear inside the tent. And the one guy says, man, I had a dream. He says, I was, and my, and my dream was crazy. Yeah, a barley loaf, loaf of bread, came rolling down into the tent and knocked the tents over. And the other guy says, that's nothing but the hand of Gideon, the son of Joash. Very specific. There's a lot of Gideons, perhaps, in Israel with popular name. But he says, Gideon, the son of Joash, and the hand of the Lord, because God's going to deliver Midian into his hands. This is out of the enemy's mouth. He hears that, and he just worships God. He goes back to his men and says, man, God has delivered Midian into your hands. Fully confident. Yes. You see, God will do things. That's, that's weird for you to go down to hear the enemy talking like that. And you're down at that precise moment. Right. But that's the God that we serve. Yeah. Yeah. That's the God that we serve that cares so much about us. He cares so much about what we're going through and what yeah. we're facing yeah. and how we're feeling. Yeah. And he cares so much about giving us the victory. His promises yes. for yea and amen. It's not too hard for him to do it. It's a very simple thing. Yes, it is. And all you have is, is all you need. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go looking outside and, you know, Moses was walking with the staff and he came to the Red Sea. And God says, all you have to do is hold that rod. You don't need anything different. Just hold what you have over that water. Mm -hmm. He did that. And, of course, you know the story. The waters congeal up on both sides. Mm -hmm. And they go walking through yes, on do. dry yes. land. Hallelujah. You see, God's saying, you don't have, you don't need anything more than you already have. Because the main thing that's going to get the job done is God. Yes, Amen. it is. Amen. Yes, it it's is. It's going to be God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, so it you is. don't need, sometimes we think that if I just had, if I just yes. had, if I just had, yes. God's saying, what you have is all you yes. need to get the job done. Yes. Praise God. Jesus. God knows how to reassure us. God knows how to speak to us. And so Gideon got his men together. And, you know, Gideon had, he put them in three companies, 300 men. And all they did is surrounded the, the people. And the Bible says that this was at the middle watch. Now, the first watch of the night started at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. The second watch was 9 to 12. The third watch was 12 to 3. And the last watch was three to six. The middle watch would have been midnight, between 12 and three, towards the beginning of the midnight, the middle watch. The Bible says that the guards had just changed. They just had shift guards. And they were surrounding them. And it's pitch dark. They don't have lamps, no electric lights, nothing like we have today. Right. And so in the middle of the night, when everybody's sound to sleep, they blow the trumpets. <laughs> they break the picture because <laughs> yeah. they had a lamp inside the picture and yeah. they break the picture and you got all these lights horns are blowing and lights surrounding you Right. it's only 300 guys but it looks like a massive army <laughs> surrounding you yeah. people wake up because they don't have any lights yeah. and they just begin standing and they're killing each other oh and they God. kill each other for the most part yeah. all these people <laughs> wipe each other out it's so crazy and so God gave them the victory yes, in an did. unexpected way. God didn't need thousands of people. Right. He just needed somebody to believe him. Yes, he somebody did. to trust him. Yes. And somebody so that when it's all said and done, that God would get the, the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. God's all about getting glory in your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Because what you have is enough. Yes. Hallelujah. What you have is enough. You have God. If you have God on the inside, that's all you need. Hallelujah. God will bring victory yes, in areas where there's been sure defeat in your yes, life. He will. Yes, He will. And God wants us to know this morning that there's nothing too hard for Him. Let's stand yeah, today. That's right. Nothing too hard. There's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing too hard for our God to do. There's no situation that you face that you go through that God is not able. Hallelujah. As hard as that seemed, seven years they went through the situation where every year their harvest was being taken. And God said, enough is enough. Yes. Yes. He came, and when his people were willing, when he had somebody like Gideon that was willing 
to listen to what he said and was willing to act, God says, I'll act on your behalf. I don't know what's happening in your life. I don't know the situations that you're going through the day. But I'm telling you, when they're impossible, when they're hard, when they're, when they're strenuous, when those things cause you to be mentally in duress, we serve a God that's able. Hallelujah. And you don't need anything else that you don't have. The Bible says the cattle of a thousand hills belongs to him. The silver, the gold, in every rock, every place that it's at, it belongs to him. The ability to solve problems in your home, in your marriage, in your life, at your job. Praise God. How many have somebody at work that it's difficult for you to deal with that? Right, right. <laughs> Those seem impossible. Because you're dealing, you're, you have to face that person every day. Yes. You know that you don't want to. Right. And the reason you go there is because you need the paycheck. Because right. you've got to face that guy or that gal. And they are causing your life misery. Right. Today we serve a God. Yes, that's right. That's right. We serve a God that's yes. able to get a hold of that person. Yes, right. they can. Yes, they can. God can even show yes. you why. Yes. God can show you why. Yes. Yes. You are in. Yes. The situation that you're yes. in. Yes, hallelujah. God can show you why you're dealing with that person with all of their hang-ups and their mess-ups. God can show you that that person yes. is who I want you to reach. You might have thought that's the last thing from my mind, last thing from my thinking, but God is saying, that's the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're only coming against you because they feel something that you have. That's right. That's hallelujah. right. They feel it. God will do things in a way that you never right. imagined. That's true. So the last yeah. thing was on Gideon's mind that 300 men would win That's the true. victory. But God was just looking for somebody that would believe him. Somebody that would trust him. And God allowed Gideon, and he'll allow you. Gideon said, God, I need to see the fleece wet. Next one, I need to see it dry. I need to see, I need to know. But Gideon took that and grabbed a hold of that and had faith when God came to him and said, reduce the size of your already outnumbered army. Yes. What will it take for you to believe God? Yes. What will it take for you to trust God? Hallelujah. These altars are open this morning. Hallelujah. For somebody that's saying, I need to talk to God. Hallelujah. There are some things in my life that I cannot handle. Yes, I see what God did in Gideon's life, but God, I need help in my life. I need help in this area, God. You see what's going on, and you know I have no answers. God, I've been dealing with this for a long time, God. Seven years is a long time, but Lord, I've been dealing with this a lot longer than that. And I need your help today. I need your touch today. I need your strength today, God. I need you to give me a solution, God, to this situation that I just don't have answers for. There's somebody who cares today. There's somebody who cares that knows more about you. That understands our situations and our dilemmas much better than we ever could. Hallelujah. It's that one that's in this house this morning. That's walking up and down these aisles this morning. That's speaking to hearts and lives and minds today. And giving reassurance to let you know that if you trust in me and lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge me. I'm going to direct your paths. God has the answer. He has the solution. He can do it any way that he chooses to do it. There's a myriad of different ways God can do it. Because it's not in the method, but it's in the God that we serve. He's able to do it seeding, the Bible says, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. According to that power that's on at work on the inside of us. Hallelujah.